you are students, this is Mr. Clifford. We're doing key economic concepts. We're talking about quotas and tariffs. Let's give it to him. Let's go uh, trips have to write 3R9 to sweep. All right, now that you've learned demand and supply and understand consumer and producer surplus, it's time to apply it to a bunch of different situations. Right here, what we're looking at is the demand and the domestic supply of some product. Let's just say boiled peanuts. Yeah, after this game, let's go get some boiled peanuts. And right now, you can see that the equilibrium, if we produce in our own country, is $50 for a crate of boiled peanuts. But this graph shows that we can actually buy boiled peanuts from other countries at a world price, right? Price W, the world price of $20. So I got some questions for you. I want you to answer them. Questions one through five, all right? Then stop. What's a consumer surplus before international trade? What's a producer surplus before we trade with other countries? What's a consumer surplus after, producer surplus after, and what's the net gain from trade? I want you to answer those questions using labeling on that graph. And we're gonna go over it and we're gonna go even further, all right? Good luck. Okay, did you get it? All right, let's go over the answers. You noticed nothing. Consumer surplus before international trade. All right, someone's willing to pay $100. They didn't pay $100, they paid 50, right? Equilibrium, the domestic equilibrium if we produce in our own country, right? Someone's willing to pay 70, they paid 50. Someone's willing to pay 60, they paid 50. Someone's willing to pay $52, they paid 50, all right? So consumer surplus is right here, it's letter A. Now, this person who's willing to pay $48, right, down the demand curve, obviously they can't buy it because the price is 50. All right, now how about producer surplus? Well, someone's willing to sell it for $10, they sold it for 50. Someone's going to sell it for thirty dollars and sold for fifty. Someone's going to sell it for forty-nine dollars, sold for fifty. So producer surplus, as you saw in another video, is B and C. How about after trade? What's the consumer surplus now? All right. Well, someone's willing to pay hundred dollars. They didn't pay fifty. They paid twenty-five. Right? Because the price W is twenty-five dollars. That's the world price. We can buy it from other countries cheaper. So if someone's willing to pay seventy. They paid twenty-five. Someone's willing to pay fifty. They paid twenty-five. Now pay attention. The person who's willing to pay forty-eight. Well, now they can get it because they can buy it for twenty-five. So consumer surplus has to be A, B, D, and E, right? This big giant triangle is consumer surplus after we trade. What about producer surplus? Well, willing to sell it for, well, they didn't sell it for 50. They only sold it for 25, right? If we produce in our own country, we can only produce 50 units. And so producer surplus has to be letter C, right? Willing to sell it for, sold it for. Wait a second. If we're only producing 50 units in our own country, then how are people buying 120 units? Well, we are importing some. How much are we importing? Specifically, Matt, how much are we importing? Well, right here. We are importing exactly 70 units from other countries, right? At this low price PW, producers domestically will produce 50 units, but consumers want 120 units, and so we're gonna import those 70 units from other countries. Bam. Now, last question. What's the net gain from trade, all right? Well, take a look. Before we had A, B, and C was our total surplus. And now we have A, B, C, D, and E as our total surplus. And so the answer to this question is D and E. This triangle here did not exist before international trade, and now it does. Quick note, you should be able to notice who wins and loses from international trade. All right, clearly there's a loser. Who's the loser from buying things at a cheaper world price, other products from other countries? Well, domestic producers, right? Their consumer surplus went from this big triangle down to a really small one. Producers lose out. But who gains? Well. Consumers, right? Our consumers. Willing to pay, did pay 50 before, but now we pay 25. So we have this total surplus that's bigger than it was before because of international trade. So now we move on to the part with the tariff. Now let's assume the government places a $5 tariff on this product, right? Producers, they lobby the government, they say, listen, $25 is way too cheap. You're killing domestic producers. Put a tariff on that thing of $5. The question is, what's going to happen to consumer surplus? Is it going to get bigger, smaller, say the same? What's going to happen to producer surplus, bigger, smaller, same? And the next thing is, where is the tariff revenue? Right? If we're having some sort of tariff on products, then where's the revenue on this actual graph? I want you to ask yourself what that's going to look like on this graph. I'm going to go ahead and drop it for you. So instead of the world price being $25, it's going to be $30, right? Because there's a $5 tariff, right? $5 tariff means now we're here. Okay, a couple questions before we answer those. What's going to happen to the number that we import? Well, obviously it's going to go down. Instead of importing this amount, right, the quantity supplied in our own country is going to be here. Quantity supplied, right? The quantity demanded is going to be somewhere over here in our own country. So the amount we're going to import is right here, right? Whatever quantity that is, that's the quantity we're going to import from other countries. Next question, what happens to consumer and producer surplus? Well, let's figure it out. Willing to pay, didn't pay 50, didn't pay 25, we paid 30 with the $5 tariff. And so willing to pay, did pay, willing to pay, did pay, willing to pay, did pay. So this area here is consumer surplus. Now, how does it compare to before at 
the world price? The answer is it's smaller. Consumer surplus gets smaller in this tariff, which makes sense. If the government raised prices, consumers are worse off. All right, that makes sense. How about producer surplus? Does it get bigger or smaller? Well, willing to sell it for it, sold it for 25 before, but now there's a tariff. Willing to sell it for it, sold it for 30, willing to sell it for it, so right here, producer surplus is right there. After the tariff, producer surplus gets bigger. That's why businesses went to the government to lobby, because they wanted to increase producer surplus. What's the tariff? We already know it's a $5 tariff. And so the government is earning $5, right, for every single unit that's brought in the country. Well, how many units are we bring in? Well, it's just times the amount that we import. Well, how do you have to know how much we import? We already said it's this quantity. So the amount of the tax revenue is this box right here. All right? $5 times this quantity tells you how much the government's actually going to make off having this tariff. Now, I told you this video is also going to talk about quotas. A quota is the same concept. At PW, we used to bring in this amount. We said 70 units from other countries. If the government comes in and says, listen, 70 units is way too much, let's decrease it to only this amount, the result would be the same graph. Consumer surplus would get smaller, producer surplus would get bigger, except this time, with a quota, there will be no tariff revenue. Consumer and producer surplus is maximized at equilibrium, right? But if we can buy things at a lower, cheaper world price, the total surplus actually gets bigger, right? And so international trade benefits consumers and it hurts domestic producers. Hopefully that makes sense, all right? May the econ be with you. You will buy the study guides. I'm doing key economic concepts. Well, key economic concepts.